Hey guys, thanks for listening to The Cynical Nerd. Please keep in mind that we do not avoid spoilers for any of our topics, whether they are current or past media. Listen at your own risk. Oh, damn it. Have our um, our webcam, or, or sorry, our um, mic arm bars. Um, oh yeah, connected. perfect. Yeah, we're Michael and Michael <laughs> again. It's very important. Michael and Michael. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I posit this to you. Yeah. Pause me away. <laughs> pause you, me. Pa- up. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Pausey. 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 Mask. Um, in a gay relationship, do you right. think that? Sorry, two men to right. be specific. Very important. Do you think that the hand job is used more frequently or less frequently than a hetero? <laughs> I posit way more, and you know where I'm coming from. Right. We've had this conversation, and yes, we've had it before. <laughs> <laughs> it's not our first rodeo. As soon as not I said first it, I was like, Johnny oh, rodeo." That sounds weird. That was the first time we've discussed hand jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. I posit that in a right. um to uh, in a gay relationship with two men, the hand job it takes on a life of its own. Right. It 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 becomes celebrated. Right. It becomes <laughs> like it's not like it's, something you're disappointed by. Like oh, what happened last night? Like she gave me a hand job. When it's two right, gay right, dudes, right. it's like oh, he gave me a hand job. Right. And, and you can only you know you have no measure of something until you have something to measure it against, which I know is like a no right. shit statement, but. I my entire working theory on this, and I've yet to ask. I have several friends that I could ask that I'm sure would happily answer. Yeah. Um. My theory is because in a hetero relationship, the hand job is like the dirty, uh, inbred like third cousin that no one likes yeah. or talks to. Like I I can do it better myself. I've been doing it longer than you. Yeah. Just get your hands off of it. If I wanted that, I'm a masochist. I don't. <laughs> But by that same right, like, here's here's my take on it. I think that by okay. that exact same statement you're making. The, handy hot takes. Is there really? <laughs> here's my, right, here's hand my hot hand takes. job take. Uh, Hashtag hand job hot takes. There you go. Uh, I, I feel like, is anybody in the world ever going to be better at it than you? No. It no. just can't be. Like, no. I feel like you could give me the dude who has it's jerked off the most dudes underneath like a high school bleacher or like wherever they do their weird i don't mean to paint a bad picture hang on let me just let me 86 that um, i'm gonna clip that and like i'd still be like i'd, I'd probably come if he jerked me off right almost certainly i mean right you know, it doesn't take much for me i gotta be honest with you certainly however oh, is it gonna I'm be gonna better voice. than one of my own like my self-service absolutely not there's just no, self-service no yeah way. yeah just like pumping gas, self service is always superior because right, you don't have to talk. And waiting on someone else to do it, exactly <laughs> for the same reason. <laughs> oh man, what a great start to the episode! This is episode sixty six. A popular title around here could be episode sixty six six because we're twelve and like hot topic stuff. Yeah, uh, sure. we'll see if we think of a funnier episode. We have a decent amount of stuff to talk about. Um, mostly because, uh, we got, we had our, our third, our hat trick mandate. Yeah. Um, they weren't all solo dolo. We did have women with us last time, but they didn't matter. But not when I look into Derek's eyes, nothing else matters. Uh, we, <laughs> we saw, we did sit next Dr. to each other too. When we went, we, with we our, did. Yeah. It was, that's, it's a critical well, of course. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. My wife doesn't even like, though they're friends and they like each other. We made them sit on the outside like assholes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You guys suffer because <laughs> I might have to go. Did you see that to Derek? Right, and I can't, right. I'm Scramble. not going to lean over my yeah. significant other for that. Um, we saw Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness, uh, Saturday. Indeed. I know that if you just started this podcast and you're three, four minutes in right now, depending on what I cut out of the beginning, mm-hmm. um, you're thinking, I just heard you guys say spoilers, but I'm giving yeah. you one more warning and I will not mention it again. Like yeah. when we get to talk about strange, I'm not saying it again. We're going to talk about everything in that movie. Uh, and that means lots of spoilers. Um, very many. Very many so all of the spoilers that we could possibly 100% spoil. Of them. We're actually just going to go through the script of the movie to make sure <laughs> that we hit every single one, every story. Note. Yeah. 
We're going to bring in uh, Ron and Samantha to do a table read. Right. Um, and I just have to make sure that uh, Grayson, my son, reads America Chavez because he'll probably be about as good of an actor as she was. <laughs> oh, burn. Shot over the bow. Look, I whatever. We'll get to that later. So episode 66 of The Cynical Nerd. Before we begin, um, you know the deal. We have a new social media manager and thus an, a new lease on social media life. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I must quickly remind you to check us out on TikTok, Twitter and Facebook at The Cynical Nerd. Uh, we our TikTok account is very brand new, and um, we're still honestly two boomers trying to get the hang of what would be considered good content. So, right, bear with us as we figure that out. And that's it. If you want to send us an email for next week, which we can, we can and will discuss live on the pod. It's uh, questions at the cynical nerd dot com. If you want to tweet at us, uh, or you can hashtag on on TikTok as well in the comments. Um, hashtag ask TCN to ask us a question. Hashtag fuck TCN because we're stupid. Or we said something wrong. I can hear my son screaming downstairs. He's hilarious. Yeah. Um, but that's it. We're gonna roll into it. How's your uh, Monday evening? Uh, it's um, I'm having I'm having a day. I got to be honest with you. I'm all I've got yeah. the allergies. I was like clean from the afrin for like a week. I went right back to it yesterday because like I just didn't want to be sneezing into the fucking microphone this entire. Now, episode. did your body accept it or did it curl up in a ball? No, it accepted it because I gave okay. it a good like week break. So I got like real. It was just a good, good high, and I'm still riding right. it right now. I feel like it's going to get me through the full episode. I feel like yeah. I'll do, and as soon as we're done, it's going to start like closing up again, and then the yeah. itch comes back. But I'll, I'll, I'll try to, try to dissuade it. I'm wearing a low ponytail right now, and I want to explain oh, something shit. to you. The low um, po. I have no, as you've known, you've seen me in public. I have no I like. Have. I do not put much work into my. Uh, uh, physical appearance. Um, even when we went to that fancy steakhouse, I wore jeans and a shirt for another restaurant. I think I looked acceptable. <laughs> Nobody kicked me out or anything, but I'm just not one right. for like to uh, uh, dress up or, or fancy it up. I have a funeral that I'm going to tomorrow. My grandfather died um, that so I had I to that. like literally bury through or, or dig through clothes to find this like one nice piece of clothing that I have that I can wear to okay. it. Um, but the low ponytail or the loney tail, if you want to save some time is like really a marker of like, I especially do not give a shit how I look today. Um, yeah. so anytime <laughs> you see me with this, it's all the way down here. It's usually starts up here and I do the samurai knot because I think it makes yeah. me look cool. Probably not. But if you ever see this, it's a signal. Like it's, you should ask me if I'm okay. It means I'm having a bad day. Just <laughs> it's future, future reference. Loney tail is not a good sign. It's like your emotional bad signal. <laughs> Help me, please. Uh, how are you, buddy? Uh, just to cast unwanted aspersions on you, I'm going to call it the Bernie tail. Br- oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. I um, I had... I Look, I have been talking about like restarting my diet for like three weeks now, and mm. I've been failing miserably. Now, luckily, I have not ballooned back up in weight. I have gained like six pounds back, but I lost 30, so I'm still doing pretty good net positives here. I'm not talking myself out of dieting, I have the meals for the rest of the week prepped, but tonight I did have some sushi and it's delicious. It was, it was so very tasty. Yeah. And I have um, my, what, what will be my final pack of claws for, nice. if not the week, the next month, we'll see how long yeah. I can go without, without breaking them laws. Uh, I literally two nights ago was like, I'm done drinking again and I'm having a glass of wine right now. So no worries. We're both on. No, nah, it's uh, okay. There's always like a train. There's always like a stutter, like a delay. Like I, I can absolutely like stop doing those things yeah. at, really at any point in time, but my brain doesn't want to yeah. because the same reason people become alcoholics, it makes you feel good yeah. and it's delicious, especially delicious. raspberry claws. They're so mm, good. Oh it really God. is the best, like indisputably <laughs> the best flavor. It's like candy and they're 5%. They're more yeah. than most shitty beers you buy. Anyway, thank you for the sponsor of the sweet way call. Uh, drink responsibly. Uh, <laughs> So I, you know, so you, you, I'm like, yeah, I really gotta stop drinking. And then you're like, all right, tonight, you yeah, know, one more then, night, t- right? Just one more. And I more. was like, I was like, well, we're getting sushi. So I, and plus, I like to have some sips while I'm mixing the podcast. Right, so right, I'm like, right. I have my night locked in right now. I'm ready to go. That was what I was coming to tell you. Locked in, locked in, locked locking in, in locking in. So we did have some community yeah. en- engagement that I would like to uh, just fire off before we get started. We oh, right, right, very right, right, right. minor stuff, very quick. Uh, we had a gentleman whose name I'm not going to be able to say, so I'm going to spell it. Okay. I H A M Z E ninety four. Your guess is as good as I I Hamzy ninety four. Maybe sure. Maybe Close he enough. likes ham. I don't know. 
Uh, I do. Long story short, we had made a post uh, talking about what we discussed on last week's episode, which was about recasting. Well, the talks of recasting uh, the role of Star Lord to right. um, Patrick Wilson um, as opposed to Chris Pratt. Um, just to make this clear, I hate to speak for Chris, but I'm fairly certain that the podcast stance on this is we don't actually want him to be recasted. So that would be silly at this point. Uh, yeah. We just, you know, it's something people are talking about. So we figured we'd sort of throw our hat in the ring. Um, and so uh, this fella uh, or, or throw our low ponytails in the or ring. our lonely tails <laughs> in the ring or brony tails. If you want to hurt my feelings, I'm sorry. If you um, don't want me to harp on that, then you just tell me. No, because no, no, no. Hit me with I'll it. stop. Yeah, I, okay. I, I called it out for that reason. It's behind my head. I could have hidden it the entire time. Right. But I gave True, it to I you. never. I, um, right. His point is basically he missed the point. Let, let me just say that this is a great medium because he's not here and he can't defend himself. And I could just get to say. <laughs> Whatever I want. I did tell him I was going to talk about it on the podcast, so I'd like to. His point is that Chris Pratt is an incredibly talented guy, and they would never recast him. And he's right. He, he is. They would never recast him, at least that part. I was arguing with him that I don't think that he's talented. I think that there's a difference between being talented and being mar marketable. And being marketable requires talent, but it doesn't necessarily require acting talent. I'm not saying Chris Pratt can't act like that would be a stupid thing to say. I'm just saying he's not. He is, good in fact, actor. an actor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything about his performances that are going to be like remembered by the Academy 20 years from now. Um, he's a good looking guy. He's a funny guy. He can throw a quip. But it's like I was the only point I was trying to make is, you know, the, the act sort of gets old after a while. Um, yeah. Again, not endorsing him, be, his role of Star Lord being recast to anyone else, but just. I, I just don't see him as I feel like there's this disparity between, well, this person has made so much money, uh, you know, uh, doing their craft. So, of course, they're talented. Not necessarily. OK, but otherwise, the Fast and Furious movies, we would all consider great movies, but they're not. They just <laughs> make a lot of money because they're marketable. Uh, they get people to fill the seats. I just think that there's a difference between those two things. Uh, in any event, well, I there is 94. I do appreciate you uh, popping in. I hope you did come listen to the episode. Uh, but go fuck yourself. You're wrong. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Um, he, uh, so yeah, <laughs> he means that <laughs> with his whole heart. <laughs> However, uh, it's like, a, it's like, it's like telling your buddy to go fuck himself. We want you to hang out. So, uh, if you are here, you thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, and honestly, um, just, just this past week from our, our internal push to engage more on social media, I think we've seen good results so yeah. far. So, um, you know, we're going to keep, doing that and trying to bring in new listeners and again if you followed us or tweeted at us or emailed us we will absolutely engage whether you want that fight or not yeah uh it doesn't even have to be a fight you can tell us that we look uh old and fat and i'll say yep, yeah. yep all jokes aside right on both we, counts. we like when our you know our friends and listeners tell us they liked an episode but we like it when people tell us we're wrong i mean we we want to talk to you so yeah don't be shy give us a I little chit chat i'll eat a kit cat <laughs> with a uh, um yeah i'm done just, okay yeah, let's just, just yep yeah, i'm done he it. uh we so before we begin uh well last last what what i would say uh housekeeping item is uh he ever, it's like a meeting for a business uh right. last housekeeping can uh can you guys have shit on the walls in the bathroom <laughs> it's really inappropriate uh no so last housekeeping item is that we missed a pretty big win which is that um we it's not like an urgent request but we've been wanting to watch studio 666 mm. and we uh, just for whatever reason forgot to put it in the doc to have watched it and this episode with the title i mentioned earlier would have been a perfect combination yeah, we're sorry we failed you uh it'll we'll never be able to do this again so it's lost forever it's gone yeah. it's all it's on the wind unless we, unless we made wait it to episode, the 666th yeah. <laughs> episode to watch this movie but you know yeah which i mean <laughs> would be a pretty be real some some real commitment how, to an act yeah but. how how many <laughs> oh my god that would be amazing <laughs> if we if some how old would i, I don't even i don't even have the math uh, so we're 66 here and we've been doing it just shy of That's two not years possible. so times 10 you're talking almost 20 years so 18 years would be about 50 50 yeah. years old i mean if we were doing that that would be the last episode yeah. that would be the the full circle bit yeah like we did it we said we do it we're fucking done we retire boom mic drop then again i make the number count i can literally go 66 <laughs> episode 666 67 68 it's true. <laughs> we, can, we can just jump anyway that's enough um moving into the week we have a few things we can review um we have a few trailers oh i liked that 
<laughs> movie into the week. That's like your oh, like movie. newscaster transition sentence. Now yeah, onto yeah. the week. Yeah, we can review. Yeah, taking, too me on, many taking me on ramp yeah. to we can review. Uh, I'm sorry, that's bad. We don't have much. There's not much we can review. Not a lot of like movie news or movie industry related shit was announced. Mm-hmm. It's mostly content released. I mean, we have um, the Moon Knight finale to talk about. We watched Sonic the Hedgehog two. Yeah. Um, and Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. We're gonna have. We already have topics lined up for next week. Um, you know, between Studio Six 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 and there's a the Meltdown Three Mile Island documentary we discussed. Yeah. Um, I also have to check back in on We Own the Night because I forget, or We End the City because I forget how many episodes are out now. Yeah. And uh, I'm out of range finished and I finished watching it. And I don't know if you want them to finish it or not, but we could also do that. How many episodes? Um, is it eight. Eight. I have, it's eight I total. Have one more than just one more. Oh, shit. Yeah. You would watch seven. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're going to dive in because I'm excited to talk about Multiverse of Madness. Uh, despite my <laughs> quick jab at the actor who played America Chavez, uh, I think. We will talk about it later, so I don't reveal anything right now. <laughs> First up, speaking of Multiverse of Madness, Sam Raimi. I put this in here because it was so sweet. Yeah. I don't know if you've read it. It's a real fluff article, but it, it basically, the title of the article was, here's how uh, Sam Raimi reacted to seeing Tobey Maguire play Peter Parker once again in Spider-Man No Way Home. And he he said, I felt, I felt like most of the audience probably felt like I was seeing a really good friend again who I hadn't seen yeah. in like 15 years and he's back. And he's, and he said, uh, it, you know, it, he enjoyed McGuire's performance. It looked like he had lived kind of a hard life as Spider-Man. And, um, you know, that's, I, I, I feel like that's what they were going for. They, yeah. He, he, he was like the world weary Spider-Man with all the experience and, and there was still some hope there, but you could tell that the years had not been super kind to him. I mean, you can only imagine, being a fucking superhero all the time, it would ruin most events in your life besides like, I don't know your wife, which even he discussed like, well, it's complicated, but you know, we found a way to make it work. Yeah. So they're still, you know, hooking up on the side, basically. Mary Jane. He's dipping the dicks in. Yeah. He's dipping the dicks in. (laughs) Uh, You know, I, it is like, all right, I hate to sound like a a fucking douchebag right now, but like reading this, it was sweet to read it, but wasn't his response. Like, the most yeah. generic thing that you could say, like yeah. it was very yeah. heartwarming and it felt good to see him on screen again. Like, okay. How much An did old Disney friend. like shuffle you under the desk for saying that? I don't know. It was just so, yeah. so generic. Not that I don't, I don't believe that he was happy to see them again. Um, th- what this article covers that I thought was interesting is an easy thing to forget. Um, and that's that basically the first Spider-Man movie kind of like, not kind of, it paved the way for superhero movies oh, yeah. as we know them today. It was kind of the first, uh, right. A fact I didn't know it was the first um, movie to ever gross a hundred million. Um, I don't know if that meant to say superhero movie, um, but that is an impressive feat. If it was the first movie ever to gross a hundred million, that doesn't sound right. But uh, um, in any event, it was just uh, uh, I had known that, but it sort of just got lost back in the in the annals of history of my mind. Um, and it was just an interesting reminder just to think of it coming full circle and that he sort of opened it up. Um, with that, and now he has the most recent installment in one of the biggest, well, not one of, the biggest superhero franchise, MCU. I don't know. Just a cool way to think of it. Um, Let me see. Spider-Man became the first movie to top 100 million in opening weekend. In opening weekend, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which is still crazy. Yeah. they It wrapped up a staggering 114.8 million by the Sunday after its release. Um, Cool. Very cool very cool of you all right so everybody's mad at netflix and that's the topic of our next article which is uh french uh netflix shareholders sue the streamer for misleading investors about company growth rutro wait sorry let me redo it again rutro yeah that was a lot better i'm glad you did a retake raggy (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah i don't know so the wrongful acts and omissions um, there's a lot of good memes in this article about Netflix that are very funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, shareholders allege that the company intentionally misled them by failing to report that Netflix was exhibiting slower acquisition growth due to, among other things, account sharing by customers and increased competition from other streaming services. The lawsuit alleges that as a result of their wrongful acts and omissions and the precipitous decline in the market value of the company's securities, uh, plaintiff and other class members have suffered significant losses and damage um so someone over at variety did the math and figured out that the time period covered in the lawsuit 
um, or sorry, the over the time period covered in the uh, lawsuit, the streamers stock dropped a whopping 67 percent, starting at a high of six hundred ninety one point six nine. <laughs> nice uh, per share on November 17th, 2021 and plummeted to two hundred and twenty six dollars and nineteen cents on April 20th, 2022. Um, it you know, so look on the one hand, when I read this. My so my visceral immediate reaction is boohoo, rich people are losing money. Right. <laughs> That's not fair because lots of people invest in the stock market who are not rich. Uh, we uh, have invested in crypto mm -hmm. before, so I'm casting aspersions. I apologize. Yeah. Um, my actual real reaction, and when I get past the first knee jerk reaction, is that um, how anyone who was invested in Netflix didn't see the rising competition. And uh, would immediately understand that this means that Netflix is not going to stay on the top forever um, is a big dummy doo doo head. And then my third reaction, which is more measured, is this this charts. They should have been more open and honest with people. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> am I surprised in the slightest? Absolutely not. I feel like every great company like turns scummy eventually, like all of them, like once they get I'm sorry. So like once a company gets really big. Of course, there are local businesses that stay like, you know, uh, have integrity throughout decades. Um, but I feel like and even when you look at like game developers, uh, streaming, like what it doesn't matter. Like any time a company starts off and they have a great idea that's simple and cheap and easy. It's there's like the glory days and yeah. then it's just like the, it reaches this like plateau and then it just they just turn into greedy. I mean, lying to your shareholders is like a huge, huge deal. Um, oh yeah. So, it, so like not only, it's funny because when we first talked about the whole Netflix drama a couple weeks ago, uh, I had this attitude where I was like, "Oh well, they're just worried about their shareholders instead of their customers," and it's like they're not really that worried about their shareholders either. So who are they serving right now? Like it, they're just making right. bad decisions all around. It's kind of weird to see it in real time when like, dude, Netflix when they started, well, even when they were like a DVD delivery company, people loved them, but once they started the streaming platform. It started off a little rough, but it found its footing fairly quickly. And like people, I mean, people canceled cable for Netflix. It was the whole reason. Yeah. Uh, and to see this massive fall from grace. Uh, but frankly, when you see a company that's like eating itself alive like that, I, to me, I, I don't know, I'm bitter and I just want to see them all suffer. Like that's my, yeah, that's my knee jerk reaction. Now I know, like you said, there's reality to that. And there are like good, honest people who have invested in this company that will have to suffer for it too. Uh, so do I mean that truly deep down in my heart of hearts? No. Uh, but I just, how long can like shitty corporate business get away with being shitty corporate business? It's just like, apparently in know. perpetuity. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how much longer can they keep being cunts? Oh, I don't know. How, how, how long time yeah, you got? How you got? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Speaking of cunts, the clippy, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Halo infinite. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't put this in the article, but Halo's season two launch was not very smooth. Uh, they had some bugs and issues with queuing. Um, some of the challenges that were released for the game pass for the for the, like the battle pass in the game um, were like there's a new game mode. It's like a it's clo the closest Halo's ever come to a battle royale. You get like five lives. And once you lose all of them, you're done. You're out. That's it. Right. Um, and they do that until some until one man left. And uh, some people were reporting if they left that match early, they didn't get credit for the match. They'd have to stay in until the last person won. Horrible. Um, just really bad shit like that. That makes someone just not want to play. Like, that's the kind of thing that you go, fuck this game when you turn it off for the night. Yeah. Because like, what's the point? You know, uh, however. This article is just a little ray of sunshine because there's a good old buddy coming back to be a cosmetic in Halo season two. And his name is Clippy and Clippy, Clippy. is my buddy. I'm <laughs> kidding. I hated that bitch. I closed him out every time. But I'm just kidding. There's a nostalgia factor here, especially for dorks around our age uh, who remember seeing him pop up every time you opened up Microsoft Word to start your your paper the night before. Yeah. Um, who would help with little things like, you know, formatting tips and well, he like think that. he was helping, but you really didn't <laughs> want him there. 
Right, right. What are you doing here, Clippy? I don't have any money. It's like when you're waiting for your girlfriend in Bed Bath & Beyond, so you just stop at the Guitar Center, and they just follow you around. Can I get you anything for you? Can I do it? Do you want to try this out? What do you play, man? Are yeah. you an axe man? It's like, just fuck off. That's what I want. Go away. <laughs> are you an axe man? I hate that. <laughs> I hate that so much. I, are you an axe man? I love that for you. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I don't know if this was intended. Totally random conversation. Did you know that uh, I Love That For You is going to be like a TV show or something from uh, a comedian? No, did not know that. Yeah. Uh, and I, if, hang on. I have to look it up now. Yeah, hit me with it. Uh, it's a television show starring uh, Molly Shannon, who you do know from SNL. Okay. Um, Vanessa Bayer. And if you see Vanessa Bayer's face, you can hear her saying, I love that for you in the snottiest way possible. And I love it. Um, I'll show you it later. It's coming out. Oh, I see her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She has I, an I've exceptionally her... large mouth. I, well, hey, um, I've seen her in stuff before and she's funny. Yeah. Uh, she definitely I can like hear her in my head saying, oh, I love that for you. And being like just the snark, the snarkiest about it. Yeah. But that's all the weekend review we have. Well, I didn't That's get it. to say my thoughts on Clippy. I'm sorry. I just rushed right past you it. You did. You stumped me. Well, Clippy didn't tell me to. Right. Um, <laughs> you didn't get a. Pu- <laughs> you should let your friend shit. finish the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Clippy, Clippy didn't tell me to start a new paragraph. So uh, all right. <laughs> I just I just think it's funny. That's it. That's all I have to say. Like you can do a little emblem. OK, whatever. But like uh, you can actually have. What are they called? The um, talismans that hang on your gun. You can have. Yeah. Hang on the phone. I actually thought that was kind of funny. It's uh, what was it called in office space? It's a piece of flare. Yeah, flare. Yeah, <laughs> got a couple pieces of flare on that gun there. Uh, yeah, it looks fun. It looks cool. It looks like a good time. It's not going to bring me back will. to the game though. I'll tell you that much. No, I I actually uh for I when I saw the trailer for season two, um, uh, something in my brain went hmm maybe, yeah. and then it released, and I heard about all the problems, and I went yeah definitely not. Um, I feel they like do the have- next one is the big. I think that's the one that's might be worthy to revisit. Well, I think uh campaign co-op is coming soon. Exactly. Finally. Yeah. And I would totally play through the story again with a bro. Cause it's a fun. Yeah. Game. Would you do it with this bro? Would you maybe do it oh, with I'm me? Just, bro. I thought of no other bro, bro. <laughs> bro, 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 bro. Um, okay. We're going to get into the trailers before we do. Yes. <laughs> such a stupid point. I've made this point on the show before. One of my favorite things to do, and I'm I'm pretty sure this just holds true in life now, mm. is to um, speak fake Spanish. <laughs> and I, of course, I'm not I'm not insulting the culture. I just like that I can make words that sound like they might be Spanish, yeah. but they're really not. You know, so we were. I don't. It's not really a funny story. We we were talking about figuring out what we wanted for dinner tonight, and um, I was like, maybe you want some sushito. <laughs> That's like I'm just making up words that make no sense. Um, that's it. That's right. I and your to son you. is like, I have no reason not to believe you. I trust you implicitly. So I so just I put that into my lexicon forever. So I, the, the game I was playing before, if you recall, was I would teach him a word and say the cool version of this word is. And so instead of yogurt, it was yogurt. Right. Um, and it was chicken nuggetos. And um, see, he's now we so quickly passed the age of wonderment where he just believes me. He still believes me. But when I tell him, do you want to know the cool word for something? His visceral, immediate knee jerk response is no. Because he's a three year old. Right. And they say, so he's, he's a renegade badass. Yeah. Like, even if he wants to know, he's at that age where he started to realize um, what messing with someone is. Yeah. And he started to do that to us. So he like tightens his fingerless gloves. I'm good, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, like we, he went to go hug my mom goodbye today when she dropped him off, and um, she was like, "You want to hug me?" He was like, "No," but he was smirking at her, like he was totally fucking. Anyway, nothing to do with anything, right? Um, but what I was trying to say is, um, you know, it's movie trailer time, and I want to talk about them. Let's do it. This this one feels weird. Okay, the first one in the list because it came out. Uh, the day after our last podcast. So it feels oh, yeah. old. Feels ancient, even though it's not yeah. it's less than a week old. <laughs> Twixt ancient. Um, Anciano is actually the right, right, Spanish word for it. Uh, but Obi-Wan came out uh, May, May the 4th. It came out, of course, with Star Wars Day. And this is the second trailer for the Obi-Wan series that comes out in short order. Mm-hmm. A couple weeks. Mm-hmm. May 27th, to be precise. Which we realize is also the same day as Stranger Things. Season four, part one, 
um, which means we're going to have lots of stuff to talk yeah, about that week. It's but a very busy week. Obi Juan, his trailer came out, and it's a little more tame than uh, the first one. I think, as far as like you know, they're not throwing like duel of fates in your face or anything. But we get more, a little bit more of a plot. We still don't know what's driving Obi Wan uh, to to go off world. Uh, we don't know what he's. We don't know who's chasing him slash who he's chasing, uh, or really what he's after. But we do know. That holy cow, the uh, Grand Inquisitor, sorry, not the Grand Inquisitor, the Inquisitor, Reva, Mm -hmm. who's the uh, female that's chasing him, she uh, is a great actor, and I got chills when she's like, you can't run, Obi-Wan! Yeah, yeah, when he's like getting away in a ship or something. Yeah, or you can't escape him or something, and I was like, oh my god, say it again, (laughs) say it again. Um, So yeah, it's a brief glimpse. You, there's actually like I couldn't believe the Saiyans of Tatooine could get any hotter, but uh, Uncle Owen fucking burns the shit out of Obi Wan oh, yeah. Kenobi. He's like, he's like the boy must when he's old enough, he must be trained. And he's like, like you train, <laughs> like you train his father. Yeah, that turned like, out oh, real well last time, didn't God. it, Ben? Yeah, yeah. Get off my fucking property. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't come back. <laughs> Do you think they had a relationship uh, like that? Like. Like, I know you can't pull out those force powers because they'll find you. So I'm going to talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the trailer looked really good. I have to agree. Uh, like, I know I was kind of a naysayer with the first one. But uh, now it's I mean, it's it's I just love you and McGregor. He's excellent. he's a gem. And he was made for the role of Obi-Wan. Um, Sculpted I, I from did clay start, for it. Finally, uh, my prequel ro- watch through. Uh, I watched episode one. Oof, that's a rough one to get through. It's a real. I know that your least favorite dialogue line, yeah. I think, is in two. Uh, I think yes. that's where the the sand one happens. Oh, uh-huh. uh huh. But um, it's really a toss up between the uh, the the words of love. Yeah. When they're hiding away, because that's oh so painful. Yeah, it's uh, and horrendous. and the sand. Yeah. But uh, uh, I did start, and um, he was a joy to see, dude. That fucking. The Duel of the Fates is just, it's, it's, it's like the best, I think it might be the best lightsaber duel. In, in it's the only thing that holds that episode together. Like, Yeah, if it didn't have that, it would be much less than it already is, which is pretty low. So, yeah, <laughs> but uh, just the part where, like, what I always love about that fight is uh, Qui-Gon goes down and then um, Obi-Wan is waiting for the, like, laser door, whatever they're called, to open up. And like when they open up, like every other Jedi we see throughout the whole series is like calm and collected. And they're like, they just oh, walk for He just oh, yeah. explodes out and immediately yeah. just doing these big wide swings on Darth Maul. Um, there's just so much. Uh, I don't know. It's like for a guy who ultimately becomes, in my opinion, the best and most truest Jedi that you can be. There's a lot of rage in his fighting in that scene. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, but anyway, yeah, so it, it looks good. I'll say this, though. Like, this is my last, um, I will commit to all six of these episodes, even if the first two suck, because I love you and McGregor as Obi-Wan so much. But because I can't chase around all of these Star Wars shows that are just, like, really not doing it for me, this is my last one I can guarantee that for. Like, I'll give two episode rule, of course, yeah. for anything that comes out, anything we agree to watch. But like I, I'm kind of moving beyond this thing where I feel like I have to watch everything in a franchise that I like because it's just becoming, it's overwhelming. So this yeah. is my last one that no matter what I'm going to watch the whole thing. But I do look forward to it. I, I, I think it's going to be good. And you mean like if they announce four new shows, you're like, yeah. well, we'll take it as they go. We'll okay, because because I, yeah. I was like, what about Mando season three? Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's of course that I'm interested. I'm already have, already have a mm-hmm. uh, a stake in, but um, I'm real salty about Book of Boba Fett. It has the Wanda Division effect on me. That like the further I, the further yeah. I get away from it, I'm like, man, that wasn't even okay, which is what I initially sort of rated it. It was kind of just bad. Like it was really a boring show. It it was a um, a pretty good Mandalorian. Um, season two epilogue. Yeah, wrapped in a bunch of shit. Yeah, like I, truly the Mandalorian episode where they like rebuild the fucking N one starfighter from Excellent. Naboo. For yeah. I was like, oh my god, that that thing looks fucking sick, chromed out. It's perfect for him. Yeah, uh, and there's so much nostalgia wrapped up in that thing too. I used to have toys of that motherfucker. Um, oh Hydro, uh, sorry, sorry. Thanks for the sponsor this week, Hydro Flask. I uh, really you. appreciate you. We appreciate you sending us these free bottles. Yeah. No, they're not the same ones from last week. They gave us new ones in the same color. Oh, they gave us new yeah. ones. They, um, and the actually, 
we forgot to read the whole bit about uh, gay couples, you know, be, had given the best handies right. and, and really was where we were supposed to, to rep them. And we didn't. Yeah. And on the other hand, <laughs> on the other hand, I have social fears that like, I'll never be able to, to eat a woman out. Sorry, well, a woman, I should say my wife that I'm married to. Yeah. I'll never be able to eat my wife out. Uh, Better than she could get if she were oh, in a just any gay woman, relationship. Any, yeah, you, you could practice eight hours yeah. a day, and you'll never be anywhere near as good as someone yeah. who has a vagina, just automatically yeah. without trying whatsoever. Yeah, it goes both ways. Yeah. It's not. It's not just. Yeah, you know, gay men and and handies. Yeah. I mean, the other end of that spectrum for for men in a hetero relationship, like 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 we are. Yeah, is I'm terrified of lesbians stealing my wife. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> But no, th- I mean, that's true. I-, I would imagine I would never, ever, ever, yeah. as much as I practice, be able to uh, do that as well. Right. Anyway, that was a part two of the conversation. Hopefully Sam will opening. never ask you to put it through yeah. the test. Like, no, let's find out. <laughs> yeah. No, it was I just invited- a bit on the podcast, Sonny. Now let's move on. I invited my friend over. Um, no, 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 no. I don't want- <laughs> that's a race I don't want to be in. I'm uncompetitive. Let's uh, let's let's like fight over like who can mow the lawn the best or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, which might still be a euphemism for going down on it. So, <laughs> yeah, honey, that's gonna, why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean trim the hedges. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. What a fucking tangent. Back to the beginning. Um, Obi Wan. <laughs> Yeah, no, the the trailer was fun. I I'm looking forward to the series a whole lot. Kumail Nanjiani's in it, and I forgot about that. And there's yeah, a very I quick shot of it. him. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. And and I will say that I can understand where you're coming from with uh, the series fatigue. Um, I am, however, I still have one on the horizon that I am like having a fit over waiting for, which is Ahsoka. Um, just from having seen all the things she's in, and right. and with the uh, the rumors of what that show will cover. So it's not a leak, but um, Thrawn will likely make his live action debut in yeah. that show. It's rumored that Ezra uh, Bridger from Star Wars Rebels will also because spoiler alert, the last time we saw Thrawn, he was with Ezra being shot off into unknown regions of space. So mm-hmm. um, you find one, you'll probably find the other. That would be very sick to see those people in live action. And therefore, Ahsoka also looks sick. But uh, there's a really cool shot of Vader towards the end of this where you see like the his panel get plugged Very into cool. his body and it's such a cool visceral reminder yeah. uh, because it's the kind of thing that they only really cover in like comic books and, and other medium where they you know they can they can have that that reader uh, monologue where they can mention that Vader is so strong in the dark side of the force because he is actually constantly in pain. Mm-hmm. Um, Palpatine chose not to make his suit as streamlined and top of the line as he could instead making it or sorry, leaving it uncomfortable, leaving it uh, something that would, that would cause him pain. I mean, he, that control panel that monitors his body has four like prods that go right into his chest. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, none of it looks cool <laughs> or comfortable. So uh, just imagine not only being stuck in that suit, but it being like super uncomfortable the whole time, a super, super like painful. And uh, yeah, I can imagine wanting to kill Ewan McGregor. What's the um not uh n- not related but there's a some superhero who has like well super villain rather whose power is brought out through pain that he has like spikes on the inside of his suit I think his name is uh, like Penance maybe I feel like it's Penance doesn't matter That sounds like on the nose enough to be that person's yeah. name Anyway okay moving right along We've talked about this for a little while because Excuse me. It's been announced for a little while. And it finally comes out. This is the mm-hmm. trailer for the House of the Dragon, mm-hmm. which is the uh, one of the Game of Thrones spinoff shows. It's going to premiere August 21st. And this is going to go back and, and show you House Targaryen before the Mad King and all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure if we'll see his fall into being becoming the Mad King or not, but I know he will be in the show. <laughs> and. Uh, oh, is it that? Close to the Game of Thrones timeline? I thought it was like 200 years prior. I can tell you a secret. It's hard to care, right? <laughs> it's real hard to care. You don't really look stuff up about things you don't want to watch, so. 
look, I'll I'll give it I'll give it the first two episodes. Yeah. I mean, it it deserves that. And I'm not saying I, I like if I think about Game of Thrones as a whole, of course, there was stuff I liked. I watched the whole fucking thing. Yeah. There was plenty of that show that was good. It's just that it ended on such a sour note that so I just bad. couldn't I couldn't bring myself to care about what was coming out next. Yeah. But, you know, and it's a story like the, the thing with this is like, how boring is it going to be? It's just going to be the Targaryens got the dragons and then they everywhere they go, they get in a war and the dragons win it for them. That's it. Like, that's. That was the Targaryen house for hundreds of years. What like, what like surprise is going to be around the corner for? I mean, they already have like nukes, and nobody else does. Like, what, what's I don't know. Like, what is there to explore? Yeah. I just don't. Um, it looks so overproduced, uh, which to me is what turned me off of the end of Game of Thrones. Not that I'm saying like obviously you have a bigger budget, you use the budget, but um, every scene just looks so fake. And like, I feel like what's was good about Game of Thrones, at least in the first couple seasons, was like, it was a lot of practical shit. I mean, of course, there were dragons and stuff. I'm not being an asshole, but I mean, like the outfits, the backdrops, there was a lot of built right. sets, like everything felt real. It felt, I don't know, like uh, it just didn't seem like a drawing. This looks like a drawing to me. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to watch the first two as well, of course. Uh, but nothing about this trailer, except that last line was nice. History doesn't remember blood. It remembers names. I thought that was a cool little tink right at the end there. Um, yeah. There's some great talent in this. They have uh, uh, Jewel. I don't know the. Um, I was just about name. to look it up. Jewels from Euphoria is in it. She's, of course, an incredible. Hunter Schaefer. Hunter Schaefer. Uh, they have another one I don't know. The uh, One of the Andes from Hot Fuzz. Great. But he's. I've seen him in other serious shit, and he's. he's not just the funny guy. He uh, he does. He's a great actor. Um, no, nah, I mean it's it could be good. I don't anticipate it to be though. I mean, I know that D and D. I should say I'm pretty sure D and D who did Game of Thrones are like not involved with this whatsoever. So that's at least somewhat encouraging. But we're still dealing with the same sort of issue with the la with the ending of Game of Thrones, which is that we're dealing with a time period that George wrote some stuff about it. But I don't think he like honed in like this show is. So it's like a lot of liberties are going to be taking be, be, are going to be taken. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But I doubt it. Final answer. We will see. But I doubt it. Final, final answer. Uh, yeah. I mean. Cool. <laughs> uh, I don't care about this. Yeah. Like even a, even even a little bit, I tried and I tried. And and speaking of don't care about it, even a little bit, our next piece of news. <laughs> I put this trailer in here early on, um, and it's just a tease. But I put it in for one interesting reason, mm -hmm. and that's because, um, Gunzilla Games. Oh my God, I'm forgetting the guy's name. Gunzilla Games is a studio that's doing this. Uh, they are affiliated with popular director Neil. Neil Blomkamp. Oh, okay. Holy <laughs> shit. There we go. Thank you so much. I was furiously Googling that. I'm like, it's the whole reason I put it in here. Um, but they're making a, like a battle royale, but they're making a, like a future, like cyberpunk mm -hmm. battle royale. And they're calling it battle royale, royale 2.0, which is something Stupid. a bunch of idiots in a marketing room. Fucking yeah. really good 2.0. Um, so apparently there are like, there's a lot of story stuff in this battle royale. Like you go on to take missions when you're going into these things mm. Uh, it's, but I don't know. There's literally no gameplay in this trailer. I, I honestly almost exclusively put this in here because it was associated with Neil Blomkamp. And, uh, therefore I, I think he makes cool sci-fi stuff. I think, uh, yeah, but isn't he like the M night of sci-fi? Like his first yeah. two were pretty good and everything yeah. else has been like, eh. <laughs> that's where I that's where I was going with that. Yeah. <laughs> He uh he had a, a good strong start and then you know now ew. so but District Nine look we, Veronica and I watched that like a year ago and I don't want to sound like a parrot delicious. because I know I say this all the time but sometimes you go back and watch something that you liked once when you were younger and when you watch it when you get a little earl older you go what the fuck did I see in this like I must have remembered that wrong I mean, that is not the case with Dis District Nine no. dude it ages so well it just gets better with time it is a fucking masterpiece of a movie. If you're listening and it's been a while, watch it. It's really good. Has Nothing it, that he's done has captured that, though. Nothing has even come close to that. Has it been a while? <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. 
Appreciate that. All right. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, for this WWE, I don't know. Um, I'm tired. Okay. It's been a long day. We are going to talk about Themezia for maybe 30 seconds. Yeah. It's not going to be long. Uh, Themezia is a game we both decided that we were slightly interested in. It's a Souls like game. Um, and then we're going to talk about the Avatar trailer and and maybe just go right into multiverse. We, like we have other stuff to talk about, but I don't know. I kind of want to just blow the load. We can blow the load. Well, okay. Okay. We'll I, blow it. I never mind a good load blowing. Never mind a good load blower. Load blowers. Uh, okay. So Thebesia. I guess that's how you say it. Thebe- th- 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 sure. Th- sure. Thamesia. <laughs> Uh, it's a Souls-like game, and uh, they released a... Hang on, sorry. I need my hands free. They released a demo of the game, and uh, <laughs> and uh, look, I, they're a small developer, and I don't want to shit on small indie developers because you guys uh, work really fucking hard on, on sometimes passion projects that you don't get paid for unless they sell, mm-hmm. and I have a lot of respect for you. That being said, if I'm reviewing this demo... Honestly, this is not a this is not a demo. So so to me, a demo means a small, very important here, finished mm-hmm. section of the game that you release to the public to generate interest. Yada yada. Sure. I, I mean it doesn't have to be like final cut. This is exactly how the section is gonna play. Some people remix those things later on, but the fundamentals of the gameplay have to be locked in. Uh, the at least the section of world they're letting you go through on the demo should be fucking finished, um, I, you know. And, and I just and it's it this demo is so poorly optimized that yeah, it's kind of crazy. This is not a demo. This this is um this is an alpha. This is this is hey guys, um, we're releasing this on early access because we need funding. Yeah, because we don't have the people. And and I'm I, I did not mean that as an insult. The, uh, it's just. It's um, it plays clunky. The combat's a little, a little clunky. Uh, it does not feel tight yet. The weird things like the dodge feels like delayed. Yeah. It, there's like a sig- like I hit the short. button. It's like dude, and then he goes Ba-da-da-da. like it's like a, there's like a lead time to it or something. It's really weird. Um, the combat's not satisfying. The game runs like shit. Mm-hmm. The uh, the world building around it, and I again I know small indie studio. But the intro cutscene is, you know, slightly moving images to people narrating, which I can't fault an indie game for. Cutscenes are uh, difficult and require lots of manpower. And uh, the biggest thing for me, and I know it's small, but the area of the game you're running around in, you know, if you, you see like lore on the wall, and I want to go read it because I don't know nothing, I don't know anything about this universe. And you see things like Wall Note Zero Two. Yeah. What? That just reeks of like lazy to me. Yeah. Like, how long would it have taken to fix that in the game file before you release your last time I'll do it demo? Um, I don't have anything else to say. I, I'm not trying to be like, there. There's a spark of promise here, but it, it feels like this feels like the thing you build by yourself in your house as a passion project to then go, hey, uh, venture capitalist firm, here's my idea. Do yeah. you want to give me money so, to, so I can make it? Like, this is not good no i agree i couldn't even get through it i do plan on like i do plan on trying to get through it i'm sure there's a boss at the end i'd like to see how the bosses play uh but there are some systems that like in theory are cool i won't retread any of the ground you've already hit like uh there are some in uh mechanics there that in theory are kind of cool you have like two bars that you have to take down for every enemy you have wounds and health wounds uh if you don't do more damage will eventually heal but you have attacks that take their health down. Their wound bar can only fill in so far as their health bar. So sometimes yeah. you want to wound them and then do some health damage so that they can't recover that uh, wound health any further. Kind of sounds, it's really hard to explain verbally without yeah, a no. visual cue. But um, like that is kind of cool to me. But like the ways, at least in this demo, that they have to get around that are not fun to do. So you have like this weird absorbability thing that you can do. Um, if an enemy is already downed where you take like one of their attacks and then that will do health and wound damage to the next person that you use it on. Uh, but like none of the gameplay feels fluid. Um, a lot of it feels like it doesn't need to be there. Like parrying has no, there's no reason for you to parry. 
it doesn't um, stun them. It doesn't open them for a crit like it does in Dark Souls. Not that I'm saying it has to be like Dark Souls, right. but it just does nothing. They're, they it doesn't stop the speed of their attack. They don't. It doesn't interrupt them from anything. They just do the next attack, and you have to do this perfectly timed parry for no reason. There's no benefit yeah. to it. High risk, no reward. What's the point? There's none. <laughs> um, it it could be cool. I agree. Like the, it's there. I see people just jumping to defend it though, just because it's an indie studio, which I am not all about. Um, no, because there are a lot of, of indie studios who go into these early access things just to get pledges and then they never finish their fucking game and they got all the money for not having to do 100 percent of the work. Yeah. Um, so this is now no longer I don't even know if it was something I was going to get day one to begin with, but it's certainly not now. Um, there is a lot of work to do. I see uh, what people keep saying who are defending it is like, oh, in the full game, you'll get to. um unlock upgrades to your abilities so your dodge is further and your parry does this and you and it's like okay i maybe maybe that's the case but if you're putting out a demo again not an alpha like you said uh they're calling this a demo then you should have at least started that build off with some of those abilities so that you get a flavor for what the game will be like you know 15 to 20 percent of the way in um because as it stands right now i did not have any fun it was so not fun that I just got to the first and not even boss. It was like a mini boss. And I was just yeah. like, I beat him and I was just like, I'd rather play something else right now. Like I have a limited amount of time before bed and this just isn't a good time. Level design, not great. Uh, performance was really, really bad. As soon as I loaded it into it, I had some like serious, serious stuttering. Oh, issues. Yeah. Uh, I had a CPU um, temp spike, which could be on my end. Um, I had a little bit of PC trouble this weekend. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, not impressed. Not impressed. The end. The end. All right. All right. Uh, we'll get into Avatar straight. Oh my God. I can't believe I said saying these fucking words out loud. Uh, yeah. The Avatar sequel is finally happening. You know, that movie that came out back in 2008, uh, and then they immediately announced the sequel to it. And then and 15 now years past. 15 years <laughs> past. Uh, yeah, so it's it looks like it's actually coming out. They announced that they have a trailer. It's a real live trailer. Uh -huh. uh, although all of these shots could have fit, just been mashed into the first movie somewhere, and I wouldn't yeah. have been able to tell the difference. Um, I will say there's one trailer in here. Or one, yeah, one trailer. One shot in this trailer about halfway through. And I know this is going to sound very generic because the entire movie is set on this jungle planet, but they're in the jungle <laughs> and oh, uh, part, it's, right. there's like light shining in and they're kind of hidden behind some leaves. And I, rem I in the theater, I did, I did think to myself that CGI looks incredible. Yeah. Um, but th that being said, I mean, Avatar one still looks pretty good to this day. Yeah. And that, you know, I mean, it, it's just expected that it was going to look better. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have any interest in this film. I, I'm actually annoyed that they're re-releasing the first one in theaters. Like, don't you dare. Anybody listening to this podcast, if I find out that you paid money, this includes you, Benson, to go see the first Avatar film in 2022 in a theater, we're not friends anymore. I don't want you listening to my podcast. Yeah, I don't want to know. Just go. Just make your own way from here. I, at the same time, though, no, it never sat right with me that uh, Endgame's initial... Uh, theater release did not surpass avatar and so they just released it again like two weeks later just so they could beat avatar and say that they were the highest grossing film of all time so if this makes avatar retake that doubt it but it would just feel good to me for some reason i don't know why like yeah you guys did it two weeks later we did it 15 years later <laughs> i don't know that would just feel good for some reason i'm gonna say something and you're not gonna like it okay i if I'm judging this j simply by a teaser, if I get rid of everything I know about Avatar and I just look at this for what a teaser is, which is just something that's supposed to get you the tone of the movie and like the feel and, and vibe of it. It's, there's nothing. We don't really know what's going on with the story from a teaser trailer. This was a great teaser trailer. Like it, it's what is it called? The way of water. Yeah. Way of water. Yeah. I, right. At, I, I read that one time ever and it's just, it's that easy to remember because it's that basic of a title. But like, this is a very calming, like soothing. You feel like you're like floating. Like there's this really ethereal music on top of everything. It's very like watery, not to sound like a redundant asshole, but like it, it really, I don't know. It just showed that very well. I, 
know that the first Avatar is a terrible movie. Everybody does. It's an anomaly because it made all this money. Everybody saw it. Nobody like didn't see Avatar, but nobody remembers anything about it. Nobody remember can name one character from it. Um, and so like I don't expect that Avatar Two is going to be good. But am I going to see it? Yeah, because I love James Cameron. Oh no. Uh, yeah, I don't mean in theaters, but I'm going to watch it. Um, but he's I, I feel like James Cameron is like one of the godfathers of like the modern blockbuster. I mean, Terminator 2. Yeah, that's I am in like Spielberg. I don't know, like his formula. I just like it. It's 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 simple. It's just flashy. Um, he just does good set pieces. I don't know. I, I like. I, again, I, I'm not going to be there opening weekend. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying that I think Avatar 2 is going to have some like revelatory message about the human condition or something. But like when it's streaming or something, am I going to yeah. s- throw the three ninety nine to rent it for the night? Yeah, probably. Uh, and this was a, this was a good teaser. I don't know. I thought it was good. I've been rewatching it while you've been talking. It just Mostly has because like I, a... I didn't want the memories of you telling me how much you're going to watch it. <laughs> um, Cause it's just, it's going to ruin the, it's going to ruin it when I try to jerk off later. Right. Right. It's going to sneak <laughs> um, in. Yeah. <laughs> My voice going, I don't know. I, you know, I'm just saying, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm gonna love it. I'm just gonna no, don't finish it. I'm trying to finish. Um, I'm gonna watch it too. Of course, I'm gonna watch it. I, I it was well, anyway. I rewatched the trailer while you were talking, and it, I mean, it does look kind of incredible. I mean, a lot of these shots look like yeah, really good. I, I but again, the you story's go to probably gonna be to just, to just have your jaw on the floor from how like special effects and yeah, and that department. It, it's I feel like it's gonna exceed. Yeah, I like you know, like we said, the first one was gorgeous, and yeah. I, they've only had so much time, so much more time to to make it look even better. Uh, there's a couple weird shots, like so. Obviously, humans stayed on this planet and are building some sort of permanent home here. There's there's like almost like a city. It, it might just be like a military like city or indus- industry, but um, that's kind of neat. So we've we've sent more people here. There's a you know, it's like a there's like a mm. an area where we're living. Uh. I don't, there's like people holding bows and arrows and the, I don't, there's the storyline's going to be generic. I yeah. just, I promise you that because the first one was, um, was it Fern Gully meets Pocahontas, like Pocahontas yeah. with blue people. Um, so here's the tagline, the summary, uh, set more than a decade after the events of the first film, you, you're telling us, uh, <laughs> avatar, the way of water begins to tell the story of the Sully family. So Jake was the human. Yeah. Who, turned into a blue how weird was that now you look back at it he like infested the well it wasn't a live i don't know i don't remember what were they called i don't know (laughs) i have no idea how any of that they they made like bio they basically made them but like there was no whatever yeah i think that they like uh bio shells almost but they're they're like fully functioning but they're like yeah there's no consciousness it's just it's this is very weird anyway uh jake who's now with Natiri, who is the the local <laughs> how to say it uh they had kids apparently the bio model he made they put fucking weird they sperms in, in it there. yeah they, <laughs> they loaded him up with a couple shots and uh, can you imagine being that guy in the engineering team like should we put cum in this thing <laughs> <laughs> should we <laughs> should we <laughs> should, oh, the angel question of mankind is always answered should we put cum in this thing <laughs> We gave him a dick, but should it function? <laughs> I mean, we got, you know, the, the lead engineer on the project's a, a fucking furry, so he's like, yeah, make it come, make it come. <laughs> oh, it's definitely going to come. <laughs> yeah, not only that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be allowed to viably mate with local, uh, the local species. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jake, and they, so don't think about the details, right? Because it makes it icky, but the Jake, Nateri, and the kids, and the movie follows them, uh, the, tr- the it shows the story of the trouble that follows them, the lengths they go to keep each other safe, the battles they fight to stay alive, and the tragedies they endure. Um, yeah. So, it's gonna be like, uh, we bought a zoo, but we three people. <laughs> we bought a zoo, but no Matt Damon this time. Sorry. More like, uh, <laughs> we bought a zoo, more like, <laughs> more like, we stole the blue? I don't know. We, we'll get there. <laughs> we, <laughs> anyway, 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 anyway. Blue come. Just get that stuck in your head. Okay, uh, it's time. It's it's time. It's in there. It's time to talk about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse 
of madness. Let's do it. Um, would you like to begin? Because I feel like I've been talking a lot. I will begin. I loved this movie. I thought it was really oh, good. Right out the gate. Uh, the I think that it's very apparent that. All right. The MCU tropes were there. Like they were, they were still in there. There were the quips and there was, I don't know. And the um, quaps. The quips and the quaps. It's not like it was a totally, like, div completely devoid of those things, but it, I, you can see right through the screen that Sam Raimi put down his, like, 50 years old filmmaking experience and was like, no, I'm, I'm going to do it this way. This is, this is the movie I want to make, and this is how we're going to make it. Um, pushed a lot of boundaries. We saw more violence, I think, than we've ever seen in any MCU film ever. Definitely the goriest, yeah. Uh, it really pushed in certain scenes that PG 13 rating, um, it, uh, I think did the absolute most interesting thing with Wanda that it possibly could have the night before we went and saw, as I was saying to Veronica, we were talking about Wanda vision and how disappointing it was. And we were saying how, all right, we're new parents. Um, how unrealistic it was that at the end of that, she had, uh, just agreed to just send her kids away and have them not exist anymore. Like yeah. if you were like, I feel like now as a parent, I hate to sound like that. I would do anything for my kids, but like, yeah, if it's between like, bur like burning down a town full of people and like my kid, sorry town, especially if it's in Delco where I live, I don't give a shit about these people. Uh, you guys can go straight <laughs> to hell. I'm keeping my son. I don't care. Really though, it's it's unrealistic. Like, no, no officer. He did not threaten arson on his town. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, just a, a little comparison a in our podcast. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I always, that's what didn't, well, it's one of the many things that didn't sit right with me. This that she just ultimately like one small two minute conversation with vision. She's like, okay, I'll make you all not exist again. Um, I had no idea. I don't know if maybe I'm just dumb, but nothing in any of the trailers indicated to me that she was like the antag of this movie. Uh, and I think making her the antag was the coolest fucking move. Um, I thought that she was horrifying. Um, I think that like pairing her sort of, uh, powers with the I can't name remember the name of the it's the Necronomicon right that's what it is they're just the dark hold that uh, was just a cool way to sort of amplify her already extremely potent powers yeah. um, I think that it did things it took risks that we generally don't see in MCU films we had our hero like our -da -da -da, like the main guy uh, reanimate his own dead corpse to fight the big bad. And he's like, literally looks like something out of evil dead doing it. Uh, it was pretty cool. And he has wings that are made out of demons. Like it's so over the top. It's so ridiculous, but that's Raimi. I mean, that's like, if you went in expecting anything other than that, that's what he does. It's over the top. It's, it's cheesy, but that's part of the charm. Um, I just, I just loved it. I don't know what else to say. Like I, I, I went in expecting, here's the thing. I, all of the stuff that that involves like the the sort of web of the MCU and the directions are going. Oh, they finally you know created the first thread between X Men and Marvel and yeah. oh John Krasinski is fantastic. I don't give a shit about any of that stuff. I did not go to this movie to see those things. I went to this movie to see a Raimi film, and that's what I got. Yeah. Um, see, not that those scenes were um, worthless. It was cool to see uh, Captain Carter. Um, I think that's right, Captain yeah. Carter. Um, yeah. You know, played by Haley Atwell, always a honey. Oh my god, she looks great. Um, and you know, John Krasinski was good as much as I don't like him. He his small role in this was very good. Um, but uh, you know, those like new connections, those new paths that they're going to create to make new, like, I don't give a shit about any of that. I just wanted to see a good Raimi movie. Um, I felt like I like Doctor Strange because his first movie. Out of all of them, now he's still the hero, of course, but he's the most pragmatic. Like he's willing to get his hands dirty for the right. for the the greater good. Obviously, with like the I mean, he literally repeats in this movie. He says, like in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I mean, the movie starts with an alternate strange trying to just take this girl's power because yeah. the line between him being a hero and being not so good is very thin. Yeah, which is what I think makes him so interesting. And of course, he always ends up choosing the right thing, but. We saw him do again, like we saw him do shady, weird shit, like like reanimating a corpse. And I don't know, like you have to get the job yeah. done. It's it's well, he he I mean, he faced consequences for it because they the whole movie, they tell you how bad it is for sorcerers to to use the dark hold and what it does to people. Yeah. What it's doing to Wanda in front of her eyes. And then he has to use it because he has no other way to get there. So he does whatever he's got to do within a reason, I would say. Yeah. 
Like he's willing to ghost half the universe because eventually he knows it'll it'll even itself out and everybody will come back. Yeah. You know, he he, he you know. Exactly. Uh in in the end it all works out and we only lose like 3 people, so losing, you know, 5 trillion for a couple of years yeah. is a, a worthwhile price to pay. Um, and in this one he didn't even lose anything in the end. He gained an eye. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was building myself up for that. Uh, that being said, and this is really, you can completely take the reins from here because I've actually said everything I have to say on this. Um, the mid credit roll, uh, mid, what am I trying to say here? The mid credit scene. Mid credit yeah. scene, thank you. Uh, was like a total just crash landing back into just MCU bullshit. Just like, oh, I'm purple yeah, uh, dimension but, traveler woman. Come with me. But Charlize Theron is yeah, going to be in the MCU. Well, she's a honey, but I don't, I didn't care about honey. her. Honey. I knew I wanted to wait because I knew when we walked out of that theater that the end end credit scene was going to be Bruce Campbell still punching himself in the face. And I knew you were going to look it up and I was going to ask you if that's what it was on the pod. But then you ruined that for me. By just telling me preemptively that that's what the end credit scene was. Right, right, right. Anyway, right, right, I loved right, right. it. Um, I thought it was incredible. That's it. So, Clea, so I'll just start off. We'll go backwards. So, uh, Clea, who Charlize Theron is, was playing, she's actually the Sorcerer Supreme of the Dark Dimension, which is where Dormammu comes from, from the first Doctor Strange film. Uh, her and Strange actually have a romantic link. They get married at one point, and then he dies, and she takes over as uh, Earth's primary Sorcerer Supreme for a little bit. But um, yeah, I, I thought her introduction was a, a neat tease. But anyway, working from the other side. So the reason that Raimi, uh, I, almost all the time, I pride myself, I or at least I think I do, on being able to look at things from both sides, like. I might not agree with Derek on the lighthouse, but it, it, it's a well-made film and I can see where he, I can see why he likes it so much. Even though I don't, I feel like I'm okay at seeing both sides of something, even if I don't agree with it. In this case, I'm having a hard time with people who dislike this movie, understanding what they didn't like about it. And that's because <laughs> Dr. Strange in the multiverse of madness is a, is the visual representation of the big, silly comic book crossover. It's not supposed to be deep. Although they went and had great depth, Wanda's character got so much to do in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's not supposed to be deep. It's supposed to be fun and over the top. You're supposed to see him reanimate himself as a fucking zombie. He's supposed to have a cloak of dead people. But those things not only are these comic book crossover mini events come to life. It also feels so incredibly like a Raimi movie, not only because of the ridiculous shit that happens and the cool makeup, but because of a lot of the cinematography. I mean, when they yeah. showed from Wanda's perspective where she's creeping in her house about to possess the other version of herself. That's a long story. Uh, she's like the camera angle is extremely evil dead. It's like teetering out behind the staircase and you feel like you're in the shoes of the attacker. Um, this is the first Marvel movie where they put a jump scare. There was like more than one in the movie. I would, I would not call this movie a horror film, but there is a lot of, uh, horrific stuff in it. There's a lot of gross stuff. Like you said, there's a lot of uh, gruesome shit. They poke the eyeball out of a big tentacle monster. And we actually watched that thing come out and splat on the ground. Um, up until, so this movie was just okay for me until it hit the Illuminati scene. And the reason is because it's when everything clicked in my brain up until then, it was meet people, get some of the premise, visit a different earth. Okay. This is cool. But like, let's get to the good stuff. And then we got to the Illuminati and like the cameos were fine for once. They were not some crazy highlight to me. We knew Xavier was going to be in it. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to see that they put him in his classic yellow hover chair, especially from the X-Men cartoon. And I'm so sad you didn't hear the audio cue because when he says his first line and starts rolling into frame in the background, you can hear do 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 do. Da, 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 da. No, and I was like, I it. was like, oh my God, I almost screamed. I didn't do it. Uh, I, but other than that, I've seen him as Xavier a ton. I don't yeah. care that he's just now able to talk to the characters that, that are in the MCU. Um, it was cool to see oh, Krasinski he because his line before you get off of Professor X, uh, he yeah. said his line that he's from, days of, future past. from, from days of future past. Uh, I'm glad you brought self. it up. Yeah. That was, I was really, going to forget. That was really great. Uh, wh whatever yeah. it is, uh, just because someone stumbles, it doesn't mean they've lost their way or something like that. That was a great yep. callback. I, I, I it was. Like that. Um, 
Krasinski has been the internet's fan cast for Reed Richards for a long time, and that proves to be true. Whether he comes back to be the actual Reed Richards, it, I don't know. The rumor is that he might be stepping in to take over directing duties because John Watt stepped away. Um, if he does, he would probably star as Reed Richards. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I, I like Krasinski. I know you're not a super huge fan, but I, no. I think he's a good actor. He, he did uh, well for his very small role in this. I mean, it, it, yeah, there was nothing. It's, I feel like he's like a scene stealer. He has to be very like everything yeah. sort of on him. That was not it's, the case here. The suit looked cool enough. Like, what are you going to do with a onesie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, his a onesie tech, with a four on it. Yeah. His tech was noticeable, noticeably different enough from like Starks. Like, I don't know if it was very quick, but when he entered, it was like a square uh, teleport hole that he just like came through. That was that's Baxter tech. Like, that's the stuff mm -hmm. they do in their books. Um, I, I liked him. What, what, what was I getting at? Was it was uh, not Monica Rambo. It was her mother, Maria Rambo, who was it was almost yeah. like a what if because it was like Carol Danvers friend got the powers yeah, yeah. and not Carol Danvers. Um, you know, and then they had Black Bolt. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, this is his actual name and not my made-up Spanish, Blackagar Boltagon. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, <clears throat> The Inhumans was a really piss-poor Marvel show that I could not... It's the only thing Marvel's ever put out in the current MCU era that I could not... No, I lied. That and Iron Fist could not watch yeah. i watched the first half of the first episode i realized that it looked like it belonged on sci-fi junior and i could not watch it it was so bad and it, it it wasn't just me that show did not do well it was not well received um and honestly i i've never said this about any comic book property but the inhumans as an entire property may just not be adaptable to the big screen and until they prove me wrong i stand by it because the not only is the premise ridiculous, it's tone deaf. Mm -hmm. So you you probably don't know a whole lot about it. No. I don't mean that as an insult. They live in a secret city on the moon. Um, and there's a caste system. There's something in the MCU called the Terrigen Mists. So the Mar the mutants, they are born with genetic anomalies and give them powers. Mm -hmm. Terrigen Mist is actually how you like force someone to get powers. Um, it's a th it's a thing in the comics. But it's how all the Inhumans are made. And basically it goes like this. Their culture, at a certain age, you're exposed to the Terrigen Mist. And if you get powers, you join the upper crust of society. This you are better so than familiar. everyone else. It's because it's a tale as old as time, but told in the worst fashion possible. Uh, if you get powers, you're joined to like the upper crust of society and you get to live a cool life. Whatever your powers are, you get to help people. You get to, you know, I don't know, fucking be cool. Be very if cool. You, if you're exposed to the Terrigen Mist and you get no powers, you're like the underlings. You're like the cat, the slave cast. You right. are looked down on in society. And the entire premise of the humans is like trying to get you to care about these super powered assholes at the top of the caste system. It's not going to fly today in, in, yeah. in the political or social climate. And uh, the show tried to do it and it was just. They didn't have the budget for it, but also the premise is fucking stupid. I, I hate all the characters. Anyway, speaking of hating the Inhumans, the leader, his name is uh, Black Bolt. Um, so his power, and it's it's almost like a handicap, but his power is that his voice is so powerful that if he even whispers, he can literally like atomize you. Like it will just like Steve. Though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Steve is the origin of Black Bolt. <laughs> Holy what shit. What a fucking callback to like the super early episode. <laughs> if he even whispers like, well, knock on the jackets. <laughs> uh, just toast. Can, I, can I somehow make that a thumbnail? Like black. <laughs> oh, just with Steve-O's Steve head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I might have to do that. It'll be, St I'll be Steve-O's head and I'll try to, I'll try my best to Photoshop on the Black Bull right. costume. Uh, it might have to be the show costume, yeah, because I probably won't find a clean shot of the movie one Almost yet until certainly not. Yeah, someone leaks it. Anyway, uh, they redid this costume from the show to make it look less, I don't know, cheap and shitty. And uh, anyway, that was a very, very long-winded way of saying the movie clicked for me when Wanda showed up and started murking these alternate heroes mm. because 
when you see stuff like that happen, it's like it's like someone threw their toys on the floor and they're playing with them in a way that feels like they're not supposed to. There, there's no you knew Tony Stark and Captain America weren't going to die, at least until the very last Avengers yeah. film that we expected someone to bite the bullet. But otherwise, Cap's not going to die in a cat movie. You know, Thor's not going to die in a Thor movie. So to see uh, these heroes get just demolished and in the horrible fashion that they did. Yeah. But she makes Black Bolt's mouth disappear. And when the sudden panic of not having a mouth overwhelms him and he just utters like a mm, it blows the back of his fucking head out. It was amazing. Oh, that was him that did that. I thought she yeah. like, like mind crushed his brain and that makes a lot no. more sense. Okay. You can actually see it's real quick. My brain played in like slow motion though. Cause I loved it. He like, he goes mm, and it like, you see his mouth expand and, but, and then it like reverberates backwards and then. Boop. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, and his uh, eye like hardcore. sank inward oh, as he was falling over. I was like, "Holy you, shit!" You can see like brain coming out the side. Yeah. It's hardcore. Anyway, the point is, in a comic book crossover, like it's big and silly like this, they can do things like that because even though these characters, these characters are, like disposable, they're not the real versions yeah. of most of these characters, and therefore they get to do these fucking awesome kills they wouldn't normally get to do, and it makes it so much fun. And when that happened, there the entire rest of the movie was this incredible ride yeah. of just uh, amazing spectacle and awesome, gory kind of creepy kill. And I mean, uh, Scarlet, which this is from Camartage, but she climbed out of the mirror, like a demon from a yes. horror movie. Like she was all like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Bleh. I hate it. Um, yeah. So that was great. She, mur she, <laughs> she pulled apart Reed Richards, like a, like silly putty. And then she popped his fucking head, like yeah. a grape cherry. And you can see the fucking blood splatter. It was amazing. It was um, To the actual merits of the film, not just the cool moments that happened. Wanda. So this actually does something you don't like. And I, you've realized this, I'm sure. But because the movie works, it's OK. Um, this movie kind of makes WandaVision necessary viewing material. Yeah. Because you watch this and you go, huh? How did she get from? where we saw her in the last Avengers movie to this, like what, what happened? And, I actually, uh, before you expand on that, I realized that yeah. one of the things I thought on the way home was like, this is one of the first MCU movies I've seen in a long time where there is no required viewing. Like you don't have to see Dr. Strange to really like, I mean, you need the, you don't need the introduction of his character. I don't know. Like they, they go over pretty quickly that he's like a master of the mystical arts and yada, yada, yeah. yada this and that. Yeah. But then I realized, yeah, if you hadn't seen WandaVision, it really wouldn't it wouldn't make that much sense to you. They kind but of the, say enough through dialogue to infer it, but like yeah. the 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 actual impact of like she had like what does he mean your kids aren't real? Like why wouldn't her kids be real? Right, right. Wouldn't make sense if you hadn't seen WandaVision. So, on the one hand it does the thing that I know you that you don't like. However, even though we started off loving WandaVision and then hated it because it became kind of rote and typical by the end that show is so essential to having what is i i would say arguably the best marvel villain of all time mm -hmm. because because not only do you understand where she's coming from at, i know he you derek said it earlier and i'm gonna say it too as a parent and i'm so that's i hate just listening to myself say it like yeah. it came out i was like oh let me take it back I don't, but i mean it as a parent it's so easy to understand. And, and I, God, I hate the person that I'm saying these words right now. <laughs> I really do. He sounds like such a pretentious cunt. I think you know more than everybody else. Well, anybody who don't have kids, it's hard to understand. Um, I, I'm going to try to shy away from using the like as a parent thing. But, you know, they show in WandaVision her having kids and having all these great memories with them and then losing them and Vision. And I saw Elizabeth Olsen talk about the character's arc of Wanda. And she said, this is a character who has constantly been living tragedy to tragedy. And I went, holy shit. She has been Yeah. from the moment we met her. She lost her brother. And then she loses all these people. She loses vision. She kills vision herself. He's brought back and then murdered in front of her. So not only does she have to kill the person she loves, but it was for nothing, which she says in this movie. Uh, then she has her husband back and her kids back. In this made-up place, it was not good. That was the start, the beginning of the end for her. 
because she was willing to hex an entire town to make herself feel whole again. Um, obviously, that was very bad. And at the end of the show, we were like, well, this there's got to be consequences for this. Like, this is bad. She mind controlled an entire town for months. Um, these people, we, you remember how upset they were. Mm-hmm. A lot of that was washed over because, um, you know, that show sucked a bunch of dick at the end. But uh, the pain was real. And we left her last looking through the dark hole, trying to find spells to bring her kids back. And that's exactly where she picks up. And from the beginning, they're like, why would you send a demon after this girl? And she goes, that was me being nice. Yeah. Like the power I fucking have. I don't have to give you guys any head start or time of day. I could just murder everybody. She controls reality. She can warp everything around her. She's like one of the most powerful beings in the MCU, if not the most powerful we've seen to date. She almost tore Thanos apart with her bare hands at Endgame. Yeah. And she only didn't because they threw like literally everything on the ship at her or something. Um, I'm rambling. But the point is, Wanda's got so much to do in this movie. Like her arc of like, it's not like deliciously evil. She's not like the dark elves in Thor two. She's not like take over your planet for the sake of, Mm -hmm. she just wants her kids back. And she's like, strange, just get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. Like, I don't care. I'm taking this girl's powers. I'm resurrecting my kids. You can either cause me to kill more people to get there, or you can just let me have it. She's like, I'm not losing them. I'm not losing them. She's like every other, every, then they make it look like there's something Every other dimension, she's got her kids with her, but mm-hmm. not this one, which makes me think like someone fucked around on the behind the scenes to make that happen. But yeah. maybe we'll find out. Maybe we won't. And the way that they talk her back off of the ledge at the end was beautiful because yeah. and it wasn't it wasn't unique. It was exactly what I thought they were going to do. Exactly. I, I had it planned. I was like, well. You're not going to beat her. She's unstoppable. She literally is unstoppable. You will not win her. And she had done so much bad shit by the end that the most you can hope for is a realization of what she's done in a sacrifice. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, America Chavez finally gains, you know, uh, control over her powers. And she says, fine, you want your kids? Boop, opens up a portal and they're terrified of her. They're hiding behind the stairs. They're like, oh, it's the witch. We don't want her. Yeah. And she realizes what she's done. And the other Wanda of that universe walks down the stairs and has sympathy on her. Oh God, that scene is so good. It's so good. And and she's, you know, she's like, like, like I understand she's like, it's almost like, just she think doesn't... about it. This woman just possessed me and made me kill a bunch of superheroes, but she still has the capacity to go like, Oh, I guess you lost yours in your reality. That must really suck. And I'm yeah, sorry it's... that you went through that. It's so fucking good, dude. And my favorite part of that is that she doesn't say any of that. She just looks at her yeah. with sympathy and she wipes a tear away from her face. She says, no, they'll be loved or something like that. I she think that's knows all she that says. they'll be loved yeah. and that's it. She doesn't have to say it. She doesn't yeah. have to say, oh shit. If I was in your shoes, I would have did the yeah, same thing yeah. <laughs> or I take pity on you or anything like that. Just know they'll be loved. Wanda comes back. She decides not only is she going to destroy the Darkhold, she's going to use all of her power to try and destroy it in every universe mm-hmm. so that no one else can call, can have this fate. End of the movie. Um, just because of the ending alone, it, it elevated this movie so much for me. Yeah. Um, the movie's fun. It's a good time. It didn't, like I said, it didn't kind of like click into like super fun roller coaster mode for me until the Illuminati stuff. And then I just, I couldn't get enough. The ending was fun. All of it was glorious. Yeah. You know what I didn't care for, though? I'll tell you this is all the shit with Rachel McAdams. I just didn't. All those scenes were like not. They felt tacked on like they had to give uh, Dr. Strange some sort of like inner personal turmoil to go through throughout the film. But it just felt so like, I don't know. Just felt like it didn't need to be there. No, I know what you mean, but I still will give them some props because. The easy answer is to just give him like another version of Rachel yeah. or something at the end, like the one that he met, but they explicitly say that you can't do that because of the incursion yeah. shit. Like you can't live outside of your own universe for too long or it fucks stuff up, I guess. Um, or like you can't stay in another universe or something for yeah. too long. I don't know exactly what it was. So MCU mumbo jumbo, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I give them credit for not ending up together at the end. And, and, and it's obvious as to why now, because they're introducing Clea and yeah. that will be his, his, uh, love interest replacement. Probably that's enough of the movie. Dr. Strange, the multiverse of madness. I give it eight out of 10 titties. 
I think I'd give it eight out of ten titties. I think that's yeah. solid. It's, it wasn't it's, perfect it, for me. Like, uh, I mean, I had made a post on Facebook. I know you saw it, but I, I, as much as I have all these criticisms of the MCU films, I have liked almost every single one of them because they have an entertainment factor to them. So even when they're shallow, they're still fun. You know, um, right. there are very few of them that I can say I respect, and this is one of them. And it might be the one that I respect more than any of them. You have a heart. I know. Did I you just do that made on purpose. It. That's so cool. Yeah, I did. Wow, I got to figure that out. I'm very easily pleased. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have a heart. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it might be at the top of the list. Um, it was. It was just a good movie. I loved it. Yeah, it was a very good it time. Was. Poop emoji. It, it won't be on my final actually. recording. It's it's only in our Zoom right. meeting. Thank you, thank you, our sponsor Zoom for the professional application services. Derek's voice hasn't cut out one time yet tonight. Yeah, you sound great, by the way. Oh, thank you. All right, we we still have other things to talk about, yeah, believe do. it or not. Let's run through them because I have things to say about them, but not a tremendous yeah, amount. Same. Let's just stick with Marvel and finish up. So Moon Knight finale happened. I have a feeling Derek didn't like it, but uh, there's some stuff I actually really love about it. So I'll go first since you did first on Strange. Excellent. This show had a pacing problem. Um, it kind of slacked towards the middle and it made this last episode, even though the last episode gets right to it, feel a little rushed. Um, things I liked about it, I like the Jake Lockley third personality finally coming out. Uh, and that they actually allow him to be the most brutal of the three. Uh, again, well, I'm not saying I'm saying it by not saying it, but spoilers. Jake Lockley just straight, straight kills Ethan Hawke at the end. Like mm-hmm. They're not letting him get away to fight another day. He murks him in the cab. Um, I've really enjoyed... Uh, oh shit I forget what they uh, call her in the comic book something scarab uh, Layla got power she, yeah. she became the avatar of um, of Towerette uh, and I she she was fucking awesome to watch fight like her costume and like her, she, she was already a good hand to hand combatant we saw yeah. that throughout the show and um, one of my favorite things because we haven't gotten a ton of like action in this show which feels like a weird thing to say but it, I think it tracks yeah um when he's fully in control of his personalities and his powers, watching him switch between the two in combat was really enjoyable for me. Um, watching him like throw one of the, I don't know what the, they would be a scream of sticks. If it was Nightwing, they look just like it. He throws one of the sticks and it bounces off. And then moon Knight catches like the original moon Knight catches it. Uh, and then like he gets thrown into a building as uh, Stephen Grant and grapples back out as Mark. Like those switches were really fun for me. Um, the one part where he's flying away as Moon Knight, well, as Mark Moon Knight and yeah. someone's like holding on to his cape. And so he, <laughs> he switches just changes. into Stephen, yeah. who does not have a cape to get away. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, they did continue to lean into the weird, but because it has to wrap up, like things become kind of cookie cutter i mean like there's like the big end fight Mm -hmm. it's it's like a neat idea on paper to say that you want like the avatars fighting in the shadows of the gods they represent but it just didn't feel great to me it felt like well it felt like third act kaiju battles and any other blockbuster you know what i mean um it also felt like something they kept forgetting to cut to like they'd have the, the moon Knight fights happening. And then it like, yeah. it's almost like they were like, Oh, we like the gods are fighting too. Let's do a quick little shot of yeah. one punching the other before we go back to, well, they're very expensive. You see <laughs> yeah, exactly very expensive to animate in the show. <laughs> um, no, I like it. It had some good th- overall. I, I love Oscar Isaac in this yeah. role. And I think that the, the show was uneven to say the least. I, uh, he's a great actor and I really like the idea we barely got any of it, but I really love the idea of the superhero who has DID, who's in control. His multiple personalities are talking to themselves. They're cooperating. Um, at least the, the two that he knows of are uh, Jake is still tucked away under there uh, and in full control and seems to be enjoying his job as the, uh, the vengeance of Kanchu. Um And Kanchu has this great line. He says, Oh, uh, I think he says Mark has no idea just how troubled he is. Mm-hmm. And the the thing comes down and he shoot whatever. It was cool, not perfect. Uh, yeah, that's basically all I got. Like, it did some shitty, stupid stuff and it did some fun stuff and then it was over. Yeah. That pretty much sums it up. I thought it was bad. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> I told you. 
it, it's like the exact opposite of like, all right, so I, I watched this and I'm like, fuck the MCU. And then I saw Dr. Strange. I was like, all right, <laughs> you guys aren't too bad, I guess. Uh, yeah. No, I thought it was, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm just not interested in the show. Again, it's kind of frustrating. I can't really pinpoint what it is, but I'm just not interested. Um, the best part of this last episode to me was, um, you just said her name and I forget. Layla. Uh, Layla is her name. I don't remember her superhero name. Um, her costume, excellent design. Excellent design. It was very cool, um, right? She is a, a good actor, and I hate saying Scarlet this. Scarlet Scarab. It feels so Sorry. misogynistic, but god damn it, she is so good to look at. She is fucking beautiful. You know what? She there's is something like, cut like at a marble, dude. My god. There is something like like wild about her. Like when she po- she gets the costume and she poses and the wings come out. Yeah. And her hair is just this crazy curly yeah. mound yeah, of yeah, yeah. I'm like, there's something feral in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now I like just my-, my cum's bubbling. It's just like, <laughs> oh God, it's just going. Um she was my favorite part about it. Everything else I didn't like. You know, uh with a show like this, uh, in a universe like this, again, I said about the MCU, despite my criticisms, I generally like all of the ones that I've seen because there's an entertainment factor. Um, even with the bad ones, you have this thing you fall back on where like the action your ape brain likes. I don't even think the action was that good in this again, other than uh, with Layla, like her, they just found really interesting ways to incorporate her wings into combat. Right. Yeah. Was it was fun. very cool. Uh, other than those couple things, the transitional things with Moon Knight, which I did like when he switches between uh, Mark and Steven, um, some yeah. of those were pretty neat. Other than that stuff, like the fights were just like standard shit, like nothing you haven't seen a hundred million times before. Um, right. I didn't care for the like, oh, I have this meme I have to share with you now. I wanted to wait until we till we did this episode. But anyway, uh, maybe we can post it to the Twitter. Um, but uh, Jake Lockley being at the end was just kind of like added this like, oh, there's a, another one. Like, yeah, we knew that the whole time. Come on. Um, yeah, th- there have been literal times when he went, was that you? No, was that you? No. Yeah, and then yeah. they just go past it. They're like, whatever, fuck it. Um, I am. I hope that this doesn't get a season two. If it does, oh, wow. I'm actually, oh, I'm out. Oh, I'm oh, out. Wow. I just don't, I just don't think it's good. Oscar Isaac is fucking incredible. Like, let me be totally clear. He is an A1 actor. He's wonderful. Shared a file in the meeting. Okay, never mind. Let me, um, let that's me not, not, let me not pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, um, it's not fun. It doesn't show you a preview right there. Anyway. Um, but anyway, that's not enough for me to just be interested in absolutely anything that he ever gets involved in. Uh, and that was the case with this. I did not like the show. I, I would not rate it highly. I wouldn't even. I'd give it like a, a hard mid, like a hard five out of ten. Wow. Uh, and like three out of those ten is just Oscar Isaac. Three out of those ten is definitely the crying on the uh, concrete yeah, in the oh last episode. God, that was a great scene. That scene, it's holy only shit, fair is so if good. I mention that that was an immeasurably palpable and emotional scene. Like <laughs> yeah. for all that the show did wrong, holy shit, that scene was so well done. It was very, very good. Anyway, I didn't think you were gonna hate it that much. Jesus, I didn't hate it. I just didn't like it. That's fair. That's fair. All right, all right, all right. Guess what? We gotta talk about Sonic Two. All right, <laughs> the uh, sequel to the award-winning. Sonic film. Uh, Sonic 2 sees them go whole hog on their characters. They bring in Tails, they bring in Knuckles, Robotnik comes back, they call him Eggman the whole fucking time. Uh, when Sonic does his little speed up dashes, you can it's like video game sound effects all over again. This movie was a fucking, just a blasty blast. It was, it was, so good. It was very enjoyable in a very like family fun kind of way. Like I know that's the thing I never thought I would be, say on like this podcast because we're talking about cum dicks and boobies all the time, but like it's just a lot of fun it was uh you know some of the some of the humor is really corny and that was Unbearable. totally fine yeah yeah um some of it was genuinely funny um like <laughs> robotnik's limp biscuit backstage oh pass God, rip so good uh you're as useless to me as a backstage pass at a limp biscuit concert um veronica had to pause it we were like crying laughing at that line so i good. i thought that uh I thought that the fish out of water skit with Idris Elba's knuckles was going to be old. And I, something about they're playing baseball at the end. And he's like, I have conquered the second two bases. And I was yeah. like, oh, dude, I love you. I want you to be my friend. He's got his own TV show now, right? Knuckles. They're, gonna, they're doing some kind of series yeah. with him on his own. I don't know that that character can carry his own, but you know yeah. what? At this point, I never thought a Sonic movie would fucking yeah. work. And I adored this movie. So, you know, and the, the fucking yellow Sonic shows up and the end credit scene teases Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow, yeah. Uh, there's just, it was, they just went full bore 
into everything. I'm glad they brought Carey back because Chip Carey, when he's left to do whatever he wants, is fucking hilarious. When he is in the fucking huge, incredibly true to the games, Robotnik yeah. uh, robot, and he starts playing music to run to da -da 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 and he uses his leg as a guitar and uh, i yeah, laughed yeah. for like five fucking minutes yeah. at that i was like that's hilarious yeah Grace, but we're like is pantera in a kid's movie right now is this really yeah. happening <laughs> da -da 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 -da. i was like this is fun uh i forgot that i oh i forgot the gift i wanted to make of him he says i'm coming and going and come and i wanted to just loop it of him going right. coming and coming and come i might still try i might still try um i don't know how, i know you liked it but tell me tell me all the it things was, you love it was everything it was all of sonic one amplified so like all of the stuff that made sonic one good was in this movie and it was done better but all of the things that i didn't like about sonic one we're also in this and worse, if that makes sense. So like it went out in both ways. Overall, it was an incredible movie, but like my criticisms of the first one, which remain the same are just that the human shit is not interesting. I still think that that stuff is critical to the movie. Otherwise it's just a cartoon about Sonic characters, which would be fucking boring. The whole point <laughs> is that Sonic has been brought into real life. So you need people like James Marsden and all these other boring fucking actors and actresses that they I get. never want to hear you tell me I need James Marsden for as long as I live. <laughs> in order to remember that this takes place in real life. So like, I understand yeah. why those scenes are there, but they suck. They are yeah. not interesting. And the wedding scene in this movie was like, it was really bad. I could, but, it, but then it ended and then it was just, it, just pure was, gold for the rest yeah. of the fucking movie. That um, was the last hurdle you had to get over. Yeah. And then it was nothing but fun. Nothing but fun. Exactly. Uh, all of the, um, all of the action pieces were great. The snow, snowboarding part. Um, Super fun. There was like, Tails had this like endearing aspect where it was like I think you you said that he looks like Sonic like a big brother or something like that was a good yeah. way to frame it um but uh just like when Super Sonic pops out like cuz you had been saying that a couple times that McDonald's was selling Super Sonic and you're like oh yeah. they wouldn't spoil it would they I'm like I feel like they would because <laughs> like why would they sell that toy if it wasn't featured in the movie so like a piece of me the whole time was like hmm is he going to pop up at some point and his entrance, even though I was expecting it, was like, I was so fucking hyped. Like, yeah, it was like which watching is so Goku weird. go Super Saiyan the first time. Yeah, when I was that's exactly. Years old. It was just like, well, incredible. I didn't like Dragon Ball, so yeah, sorry. The comparison didn't did. work out. No, I mean, I, you know, there's even, it's like the chintziest, like exactly what you would expect dialogue, but they're like, we're family. Like, I love yeah. you. You're my, you're my son. Thanks, dad. Uh, right before they think they're about to get hurt. And you know, they're not going to get hurt. It's a kid's movie. But when you see this, the foot stomp and he's like, what's that? And I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. and he pops out and he's just and I was like, oh, my. And when he like he rips through the head. Yeah. And then he's literally like just like uh, dive bombing and like through the suit. And I'm like, I was like giddy with excitement, which is crazy because I played those games. I know they were fun, but like I'm, I'm not like a Sonic super fan. Yeah. Me I just know that that's, you know, and I for some reason, if it, it fucking got me, you got me. Dude, his fight in the chaos temple when he gets like thrown behind the waterfall and you just see like the blue electricity. going. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, I'm too excited for this kid's movie right now. I was like, just thinking about it, I have goosebumps right now. Uh, I was like so head fun. to toe, like, fuck, yeah. And then he just keeps like slamming him into the ground again and again. Yeah, and yeah. again. Oh, dude, it was awesome. Um, it was very fun. I feel like there was like a reference to Parks and Rec uh in the beginning there is where he goes he was the worst or whatever yeah. i'm like was that like because it's the same actor who yeah sonic i'm like was that a direct reference to Parks it and absolutely Rec? was it had to be right yeah he, he was like everyone knows this guy right yeah <laughs> yeah they were talking about robotnik i think and he's like he's the worst <laughs> yeah oh it was so good dude i loved it and like Very fun. the fact that they're introducing shadow now i'm like yeah why not let's let's do it bring them all in I am uh, never going to do a deep dive into Sonic lore, except what's in these movies. So just bring in whatever you need to bring in. Let's do it. Yeah. Two for two so far. So. I uh, was looking for the clip, but I can't find it. Um, one of my favorite. Jim Carrey moments from this. I'm deleting a file, by the way. Don't freak out. Okay. <laughs> one, one of my favorite Jim Carrey moments from this film, besides the leg guitar thing, is where he gets the Chaos Emerald power. And uh, he's in the 
store and he's like sinister 2.0 and he like he does like a little song but it's like digitized and i don't know why it just got me because i knew that was carrie fucking around and i knew they were just like yeah keep it we're we're gonna do something (laughs) with it um that's it i liked it it was fun you should watch it uh it really is my like my son loves sonic now um unfortunately in mcdonald's i found out that they are no longer selling the blue sonic Mm. um so Sons of bitches. I'm just gonna buy him like a ten dollar. Well, actually, you know what? Scott had messaged me about a figurine, yeah. so I I don't know which way I'm gonna go yet because I Scott's now he like knows it was you on just display. said this li- like on the pod. Now he knows the value of that thing just skyrocketed. He'd be like, yeah, I'll give it to you <laughs> for hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, the the one he has looks really cool, but it looks more like a display thing. Right. And I'm sure I, I'm sure he could take it off and play with it. But like, there's literally a ten dollar one at Walmart that my son can like get dirty and fuck up and piss on and like i mean he's not gonna he's not an animal you know yeah. but, but you, you know what i'm know. saying yeah i mean he might and when he's like where'd you get this You'd just be like mm, mcdonald's well dad i was trying to make him yellow sonic you- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom anyway uh that's all the movies we have to talk about that actually officially that's it rapes us up uh we have three mile island documentary episodes to watch for next week um studio 666 mm-hmm. to watch for next week Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think we have anything else after that scheduled. Yeah, we'll just figure yet. It out. We will. We, we will indubitably figure it out. There's uh, there's like shows coming out fucking left and right right now. In fact, they keep surprising me. Uh, the Three Mile oh, Island. We thing, can like, cover uh, Outer Range as a whole next week. I'll, I'll have uh, one episode to watch. So right, right, right. Let me write these down so I don't forget. It's the worst. <laughs> oh, dude, we're almost at the end of uh, season two of Better Call Saul, and it's so fucking good. Oh my god, dude, it's so I'm in good. F- I'm in four right now. Yeah, and it just keeps getting better. Yeah, some shit happens yeah. at the end of three, beginning of four. Right, 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 um, right, 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 tight, 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 tight. Uh, I will not spoil anything. Yeah, please we'll, don't. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so yeah. So by the way, blah 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 dies. Uh, <laughs> Like well my what kind of piece of shit would I holy cow. I can't even I can't even imagine being that guy. Anyway, where can everybody find you at on on the internets, on the tubes? They can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Dr. Gloom M D. That's D R G L O O M M D. I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of streaming this week because I have a final coming up on Thursday. Uh oh. so most of my free time, of which I have minimal, is gonna be uh toward uh studying for that i might do a little bit tonight i don't know we'll see dun on it i got pantera stuck in my head yeah. <laughs> it's it's the background music while we do our our lead out right um i have channels <laughs> it's uh it's at tc you gotta find them yourself it's at tcn plays um uh, on both twitch and twitter i haven't been streaming a whole lot either and that's because i've found that um my fucking absolute happiest place in the world is turning on Better Call Saul mm. and watching it while I build the Millennium right. Falcon. And I mentioned this to you off stream, building the Falcon, which is, it's literally right off camera, but building the Falcon has, um, I can actually see the edge of the table right here. Uh, anyway, yes. the building of the Falcon has been such a fucking, just, just, just a joy. Mm. It's been there just it an absolute, mm, it's been a long time. I've been a while. Uh, it's been an absolute joy and I, I'm almost there and it, it, I, I told you this off stream, but it, it, uh, or off podcast, but it feels very much like uh, a video game that I'm completely engrossed in, Yeah. but I, but I, at the same time feel trapped by it. Like, I feel like I, I have to finish it before I can move on to the next thing that will suck up all of my time. Well, so, that's okay. Cause I decided, I think I'm going to restart Neo too, because I want to do an ax build. Like I'm actually thinking about my oh, build now. Okay. All right. Just don't, if you know what you say, if you start three times, you're a peep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm about to say restart three times, but I messed it up. Cause I was too excited about my reference to shaking it three times and playing with yourself. Of course. Uh, Neo two is great. I did start it, but again, I, every night I'm like games or the Lego. I got to finish that motherfucker. Yeah, got to do it. I, I attached a piece to that Lego last night that I almost couldn't do myself because it's getting so big and heavy. Um, I had to attach, this is very quick. I had to attach the, the under gun right in the middle under the ship. There's like the little, I'm like, just imagining hole. like a Kevin's chili scenario where you're like lifting the whole thing to put it on and then you just fall over and it just Bro, shatters into a million pieces. It was pieces. close. <laughs> so the, so the, the central frame and the way that this thing connects is it's got these two like pillars that are pretty long pieces and they have a bunch of little connectors on the sides of them. 
So from underneath, you have to come up, line it up with the center of the body, right. push the pins in. Cool. Well, the it's the piece is this tall, and so is the falcon. So I I have to lift it up. Yeah. And this thing weighs an incredibly heavy amount of pounds right now, and yeah. it's not even done yet. And furthermore, I'm trying to one hand it. Well, I have this piece. I swear to God, it was almost it was almost an actual Kevin's chili scenario, and I was scared out of my fucking mind. <laughs> but what were my options? Stop and wait. From my wife to help me tomorrow if morning. If you told me that well, happened, a- I would have to for like weeks pretend like, ah, oh, that sucks, man. But like internally, I would be laughing, just hysterically oh, no. crying at how funny that is, the mental image. What more emasculating sentence could I utter in my life than saying, <laughs> I waited to finish my Lego so my wife could help hold it up for me? <laughs> I'm not into, you know, defying gender roles, and that's kind of a right. Can toxic you help thing me? to say. But at a certain point, the little beard I have would just fall off my face, wither and die. All my testosterone levels would fall through the. Anyway, um, so yeah, I haven't been streaming. The whole story was that I haven't been streaming the Falcon build that much. Um, I want to get back into it. I think as I get into the final throws, I'm going to do it. So, like, as I'm, I'm finishing up a lot of the pieces on the bottom, the two sections in the middle. Once I start putting top plates on, I'm going to start streaming again, which will probably be this week. Um, that's it. What are you laughing at, motherfucker? All right. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk. We'll be back next week. Episode. This is episode 66. Next week will be episode 67. Yeah. Uh, close if you to could, the sex number. Very close. Oh, we, we are. We are. I, I, the thumbnail is obviously going to be nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just that guy's creepy face. Right. We are uh, once again on TikTok, Twitter. Facebook at the cynical nerd. Hopefully soon Instagram. I'm still waiting mm. for this some bitch to give me my account. You know who you are, you son bitch. <laughs> That's it. We're done. We're leaving. Bye. Bye. <laughs>